This is Focus on Your Health. It's brought to you by Kingman Regional Medical Center in historic Kingman, Arizona. I'm T.G. Lafredo, and this week I'm coming to you from KRMC's Cancer Center. My guests are the Cancer Navigators of KRMC. Joining me this week are Chrissy Pope. She is an RN, and she's the Nurse Navigator of General Oncology. Chrissy, welcome. Thank you. And Brandy Dixon, she's the Breast Health Navigator and a social worker. Brandy, welcome. Thank you. And Kelly Sturdy, she is the Clinical Lung Navigator and an RN. Kelly, welcome. Thank you. So I'm, I'm excited to talk about the many facets of what you do here at the Cancer Center and what cancer navigators are. I think that's the best place to start. Chrissy, what is a cancer navigator? So with cancer, uh, diagnosis and treatment of cancer um, is a very intricate process uh, requiring the involvement of various disciplines from pathologists to radiologists, medical oncologists, radiation oncologists, surgeons. Often this process can be too complex and very overwhelming for the patient to navigate on their own. So that's where the navigators come in. We have a goal to make sure that the patients make it through the system in a timely manner. We also make sure that the patients don't fall through the cracks. We're kind of like their central coordinator between all the other disciplines. Here at KRMC, a lot of those specialties are not necessarily under the same roof. Some of them aren't even all here at KRMC. We do have patients that come from Havasu and Bullhead all throughout Mojave County, see different providers in those other areas. So we kind of maintain that coordination of care between our providers and their original providers that did the workup. Yeah. And some, some types of cancer are very survivable. Some of them have a more serious diagnosis. But I imagine no matter what kind of cancer you're dealing with, when you first hear that from the doctor, you, um, you can really be taken aback, right? And and this is where you've, you've identified that that moment where the experienced cancer navigators can come in and say, okay, we can help you through this process. Here's what you need to know. Exactly. We, we kind of, even though a lot of our first conversation is over the phone, we're there to hold their hand and help them through this process, be it a comforting ear, comforting shoulder for them. Yeah. Um, and you have to know all the different resources available in the hospital, the different avenues of treatment. And Brandy, you're a social worker, and this sounds like this is really the overlap of how, um, right, all that training must come in handy for you. It does. It does. It helps us to find the barriers for them and help them to address them in a way that makes sense to them. Because sometimes once they get a diagnosis, just the diagnosis itself puts them into shock, and they're like, okay, now what? Yeah. And it, Unfortunately, if they don't have that extra person there to kind of give them, I guess you could even call it a flashlight to get find the way, they're going to get scared and many times go in and not address the issue. So as navigators, we do you do have to have that social work, I think, mindset that we're here to advocate for them, make sure that they don't get lost in the system, make sure that they understand that they have the support that is not only going to support them, the patient, but their families as well. Because when a patient gets a diagnosis, not only is it the patient that's getting it, it's the whole family. And so as, our, as navigators, we kind of step in there and kind of give them options, help them to practice self-determination, and help them to be able to find the resources that they need to to um, to get the desired outcomes that we want for them. I'm told also that March is uh, Social Worker Month. It is. Social I, workers have superpowers. Don't you know that? Do they? Uh, is they there a do. greeting card for that, by the there way? There should be. <laughs> yeah, I'll take um, donations if they want to. <laughs> <laughs> no, but truthfully, social work is important, and I think it, it really can complement what the nurses do cause, because what they do is so important. And then as social workers, we can come up behind them and help to support them and maybe share some um, resources that maybe we have that they weren't um, savvy to and vice versa. So it's a really wonderful collaborative relationship. And the position of cancer navigator is fairly new in the world of cancer care. Is that correct? It is. Actually, back in approximately 1990, uh, Dr. Harold Freeman, a surgical oncologist, felt that there were barriers to getting people back in for treatment. So he initially brought it around and then it's evolved over time. And so, for example, here at KRMC, Dr. Johansson, he was one of our initial radiologists that really worked to get our breast program on right side up because he, when he came, we just weren't being as effective as we could be. 
And they found that through using navigation services, that it would help to bring more information to the community as a large because we are a rural community and we were able to do more with um, screening events, bringing more patients in, increasing our knowledge and technology. And it's just kind of overflowed. I talked to Dr. Johansson and it's been about 12 years that we've had the breast navigation in place. And I've been the breast navigator for four years. And over the last year, they were like, okay, this really is a value-based program. And so they brought on, thankfully, we have Kelly and Chrissy that have come in. And so it's a really great way to fully cover and give holistic care to um, patients um, diagnosed with cancer. I would like to, to kind of add to that. Um, so back in uh, 2017, the ONS, the Oncology Nursing Society, established what they call core competencies for um, a navigator. At that point, it kind of gave a little bit more depth and meaning to oncology navigation roles. Um, and like Brandy said, you know, just recently through the whole country, navigation is, they're starting to see the benefits of it, not just our cancer center, but cancer centers all over. Kelly, when a patient is first diagnosed with cancer, what is your introduction to that patient? How do you become part of that patient's journey? Uh, The patient can be referred either by their physician or they can self-refer. And then we reach out to them and introduce ourselves, explain what we're doing as far as the navigation process, and then um, help them with, this is how your consult is going to go. You might need a surgical consult. You might need this. Just kind of helping them map out where they need to go to get started on their treatment. Chrissy, what is the range of services that CareMC offers to patients dealing with a cancer diagnosis? We have a wide range of services from imaging to surgeons, pathology, medical oncology, radiation oncology. We also have resources, if they're not available within KRMC, that we can get the patient set up with. So even if a patient comes to us with something that we don't do here internally with KRMC, we can get them where they need to go. Within our cancer patients, we also have a case manager. Her name is Jamie. She's an oncology dedicated case manager. She can help break down certain barriers like transportation. Uh, She's for the past two two years, she has uh, secured the American uh, Cancer Society's transportation grant, which has helped lots of our patients with transportation. We also have clinical trials. Another thing Jamie helps with is there's a lot of grants out there for patients going through specific cancers. She has successfully secured grants for some of our patients. And just to add, can I add to that, as my social, putting my social work hat on, it's important to realize that people's um, mental health status is important during a diagnosis such as this. So KRMC is great. They have a wonderful behavioral health department that if people need counseling services, they have counseling services. We like for to address spiritual needs. We do have a chaplain at KRMC. So if people, their families, they need to have a little bit of additional support that way. Plus, we also have support groups. We just started a general cancer support group for general cancers. Here, it's a daytime group, which is awesome because some people can't drive at night. And then I also do a breast cancer support group, which is like the third Thursday of every month, which from 5.30 to 6.30, we have people, different stages, ages, they can bring their support people, just ways to we can support our community. And we're starting that painting support group too. Yeah, we have, for the patients at the KRMC Cancer Center, we also have a support group. Our next support group, which is on March 22nd, is actually going to be an art therapy session. Uh, Starts at 10. uh, They'll just have to sign up with the girls in the front. We provide all of the supplies, but it gives the patients a chance to meet other people, express their, what they're going through, through painting, it's, a, it's going to be a guided painting class, so we're going to have somebody up there showing them what to paint, maybe helping to answer some questions. But it's just a good way to, fun way to get together and uh, share support with one another. We also have an oncology dietitian, too, that is trained to know what 
challenges oncology patients are having. Oh, sure, um, right, because certain medic uh, certain illnesses and then certain medications and the and, way they react, right, right? And radiation, and there's lots of challenges with that. So there's somebody that um, she's not on, she's not on site, does she? She she's she's on the phone. Yeah. yeah, but she um, she's available to help patients. Brandy, we said that some types of cancer the prognosis is better and some some are more serious, right? Yeah. Does that change your approach to working with a patient? It does to a degree, but let's not forget that patients even having received, like for example, a stage four diagnosis, is it is no longer because of the, um, the involvement of technology and everything, it's no longer necessarily a death sentence. Sure. Uh, there are many patients living with stage four that are living fruitful, vibrant lives through the quality of care that they get. I know, I know specifically from here since we work here, but from the staff and the providers here at KRMC, they're living um, full lives. So even though some of the diagnoses are more serious than others, we take them all each one seriously and we try, I know for myself and I know the girls also try to look at the patient and what their needs are and try and tailor what we're doing for them to what they what they desire and kind of where they're at in their walk. Brandy, you are the breast health navigator. I was doing a little bit of research and I found that uh, according to the CDC, each year 264,000 women in the U.S. are diagnosed with breast cancer. Can we talk a little bit about the importance of mammograms? Sure. Well, it's a very treatable disease nowadays. And it's important, let's talk about the importance of mammograms and the early detection of it, because the more women that are screened increases the chance of early detection, which that by that vein of thinking is going to create a less invasive treatment for intervention. For example, if we, treat, if we find something at the earliest possible chance, many times it's just gonna require surgical intervention and then you can possibly go forego any further adjuvant treatments such as chemo or radiation. Early detection can possibly stop anything beyond surgical intervention for patients. Basically, just think of it as 10 minutes can save your life. They've been working over the last 11 years since they implemented the breast screening program to reach Mojave County and the rural areas. It's taken you know, 11 years, but through the Catch It Early, they've been able to um, increase our screening numbers. KRMC and their foundation has been super generous with us. They worked with um, Terry, um, Terry Williams, who was our PR director, and Dr. Johansson in the very beginning to create this program. KRMC Foundation found out how important it was to help women that were underinsured or uninsured get those mammograms to make sure there's no barriers to at least get that screening done. We've implemented it further into diagnostics on a limited basis, but we do have programs to help them. We work in concert with the Well Woman Health Program through the state of Arizona, um, access, trying to make sure that there's no reason why a woman can't have a mammogram. 25 to 30% of women can have their lives saved by having just early screening. In 2022, we screened for over 7,700 um, screening mammograms through the Catch It Early program. We caught over 133 breast cancers because of that. So what we're doing is working, and so the fact that they're implementing more ways to screen other things that can be taken care of is amazing. What are the basic guidelines for breast cancer screening in terms of the age that you would like to see women start to get the screening? Typically, we see um, screenings 40 years and above is when our, our radiologist recommends starting screening mammography, and it's yearly after that. I know there's been some challenges with different thoughts or opinions, but according to the ACR recommendations, it's um, yearly. And you want to do it up until the point to where the patient comes to that personal decision where like longevity of life, like you're, if you're 90 and you're super active, go for it. Screening mammograms till you're 110. Mm -hmm. But you know, it's things to um, definitely discuss and collaborate with your primary care provider on as far as that. But starting at 40 years old for screening mammograms, we can do diagnostic earlier. Um, they usually will um, stick with ultrasound, try to if they're under 30. But um, in males, we do diagnostic mammograms on males. Um, screenings, we don't typically do. 
Kelly, um, we talked about the importance of breast cancer screening, and in recent years, the hospital has also begun low-dose CT, which is a kind of lung cancer screening. Your target audience is long-term smokers, right? How do you define that? Right. So right now, we're using the CMS or Medicare guidelines for the patients that we're screening. Um, they should be between 50 and 77 years old, no symptoms of lung cancer. Um, you should have a tobacco smoking history of at least 20 pack years. So what that means is one pack a day for 20 years is 20 pack years. Right, right. Um, and then it should be a current smoker or somebody who's quit in the last 15 years. Um, and then right now we are starting to expand the catch it early to include lung cancer patients as well. And we actually have a gala coming. Is it gala or gala? How do you say that? <laughs> It's a gala. I think it depends on what part of the country you're from. I think it okay. does, yeah. Well, yeah. say it in an English accent. In Minnesota. It's a gala. It's a gala. <laughs> it's a gala. <laughs> it's a gala. <laughs> that must have been great for fun. No, um, so but we have a gala course. coming up on March 18th, and that is to benefit lung cancer screenings That's right. for patients. So we can um, help with patients who maybe their insurance won't cover it, and they do they qualify, or they have, they might be somebody that smoked, um, quit smoking 16 years ago, or you know, smoked a half a pack for 20 years instead right. of a whole pack, but they still should be screened. Right. I know from years of speaking with doctors and nurses and even some patients, um, sometimes patients are reluctant to, uh, with in the case of breast cancer, in the case of low-dose CT, uh, okay, I'm a patient, I have this voice in my head that says I should probably get this checked, but I'm also afraid of what mm -hmm. I'm going to find out. Do you, do you run into that much? Oh, yes. A lot, a lot of patients just don't want to know. And you try to encourage them that the whole goal of the, of the screening is to find cancer early when it's very treatable and very curable. Um, and then in our county in particular, we have the highest incidence in our county out of any county in Arizona. And we have above average rate of new cases, but then we have our rate of screening is below at the bottom. So we have, we have a, bit, a lot to do in this county. Kelly, do you find sometimes lung cancer patients have to deal with a stigma of having lung cancer? Yes, I think lung cancer has a lot of stigma because it's seen as something you've done to yourself. You smoked, you made that choice, you did that to yourself. And a lot of people, I mean, back in the day, it was okay to smoke. It was encouraged. And we all do things when we're younger and don't, <laughs> they maybe aren't the best thing to do. But either way, I mean, a person deserves to have the best care and, and the best of everything, even if they smoked. I mean, that, that's, and, and not everybody that gets lung cancer is a smoker. Plenty of people are exposed to other things or, or have it for other reasons. Um, but, and everybody knows about getting a mammogram, getting screened for that. And it would be nice if it was really that normal to get lung cancer screening. It was just automatic when you go into the doctor every year. Have you had your mammogram? Have you had your colonoscopy? Have you had your lung cancer screening? Yeah, yeah. So. The first time when, when Dr. Adam Braze, who handles the low-dose CT, when he first started here at KRMC, I had an interview with him, and he said, you know, historically, if you look at cigarette advertisements, they use doctors. And actually, I did some research on the advertising, right? And it's like, um, whatever, eight out of 10 doctors recommend this brand of cigarettes. Yeah. Did you ever hear about that? No. no. It's yeah. shocking. That is crazy. We were yeah. talking about the Joe Camel ads the other day, though, yeah. how cute, uh, cute Joe For Camel sure. and you know, you've come a long man. way, baby. And the Mar yeah, the Marlboro Man. Uh, yeah. I mean, there's, it, it was a totally different time. You know, if you were to follow a busy doctor as he makes his daily round of calls, you'd find yourself having a mighty busy time keeping up with him. Time out for many men of medicine usually means just long enough to enjoy a cigarette. And because they know what a pleasure it is to smoke a mild, good-tasting cigarette, they're particular about the brand they choose. In a repeated national survey, doctors in all branches of medicine Doctors in all parts of the country were asked, what cigarette do you smoke, doctor? Once again, the brand named most was Camel. Yes, according to this repeated nationwide survey, more doctors smoke Camels than any other cigarette. Chrissy, we talked about the importance of breast cancer screening and lung cancer screening, and I know the hospital is ramping up efforts to screen in other areas. Can we talk about that? Yes. We actually, at some of the health fairs, have been also screening for prostate cancer. And here in the, in the near future, we're going to be screening for colon cancer as well. In the moment that we have left, 
I should mention this, and that is that KRMC's cancer program recently received accreditation from the American College of Surgeons Commission on Cancer. So to earn that accreditation, this commission uh, researches 34 different quality control areas of a cancer program, meaning that all the way across the board, you know, they've vetted the work that you are doing here and said that, you know, that it's up to those standards. And it's a pretty big deal, right? Absolutely. The fact that we met 34 national oncology standards, you know, which kind of cover just about every aspect of cancer care from admin support to the fact that our surgeons meet the national standards for uh, cancer surgeries. We have a tumor registry that helps identify areas that we need to kind of focus on so they can take a look at the data and be like, hey, we have an influx of lung cancer. What can we do about that? Hence the lung cancer low-dose CT screening. But there is 34, that is, and we met every single one of them. That is a feat in itself. The, the hospital itself, we don't get any like monetary compensation or any other type of compensation for it. It is there though to help the patients feel secure and, and that they are being treated by a quality facility. And it's a big deal for a small community hospital in this county. We're the only one in this area that has this, this accreditation. And in the state of Arizona, we're one of three. The other is at CTCA and then Banner in Tucson. So yeah. that's, that's a pretty big deal. And if you've just received this serious diagnosis, the last thing you want to do is load up and drive to Phoenix twice a week or, you know, all the travel that you think, to, how comforting to know that you can get the care you need right here at home. You know, so many of our community residents don't understand what a high quality program we, that we have here. So it's exciting for us to share with them to say, hey, listen, you don't have to drive four hours to Phoenix. And a lot of them have walked away that I've talked to that after they've had their intervention, their treatments, they're like, oh my gosh, I'm so glad that I came here because I have received quality care and they just keep raving about the improvements in KRMC as a whole since they started first coming here. And I've lived in Kingman for since 2001 and I've worked for the hospital for going on nine years and I've just seen it get improved better and better. And I would put our program, our oncology program against any in the Western United States. We have high quality everybody. And not only are they high quality and they're very educated, they care from the patient access representatives to the navigators, to the case managers, to the doctors, the staff, the nurses, everybody is just cares about these patients. So I'm just like, I have a tendency to get on a soapbox, but it's like super exciting. With the accreditation, the other really important factor that it shows patients is that KRMC has always and will always be there to serve our community to the highest quality care. You've heard from Chrissy Pope. She is an RN and the General Oncology Nurse Navigator. Also, Brandy Dixon. She is a social worker and the Breast Health Navigator. And Kelly Sturdy. She is an RN and the Clinical Lung Navigator. Ladies, thank you so much for your time today. Thank, thank you, you for having us. Yeah, thank you. It's been a lot of fun. And ladies, if you're overdue for your annual screening mammogram, call KRMC's scheduling number at 928-692-2727. That's 692-2727. For more information on low-dose CT and other cancer screening, call the Cancer Center at 928-692-4665. That's 692-4665. And that is the program that's Focus on Your Health. I'm T.G. Lafredo. Thank you so much for listening. We'll catch you next time. You just got yourself a radio commercial, I think. <laughs> that's great. That is. That's good. That's great. Okay. I practiced that. <laughs>